So I want to encourage all young people, if you want to run for office, get in there, build up your policy understanding, get out of the community, make sure your leaders know you, work hard, and you'll get there. We need you. How you doing? It's good to meet you. Awesome. Thank you so much uh, for coming out today. Thank you. So you're, you're currently uh, one of the youngest uh, members of the Tennessee uh, General Assembly. Yes. Uh, can you please tell me like what obstacles you faced and struggles with being a young person? Absolutely. Office? Well, it's definitely an honor to serve in the Tennessee General Assembly. I was elected a year ago yesterday, won my primary, and I didn't have a general opponent, so I've been serving for about a year. And uh, for me, it isn't feeling like you have the a whole generation on your back that you represent because it's so few young people um, definitely the youngest person in the state house um, and so what I feel like is I'm representing the ideas and the thoughts and the, the policies of young, a whole generation of young people who are looking to me to advance their agenda and create a better life for them. Um, too many times that, you know, we experience different things as millennials, Gen Zs, um, than some of our baby boomers, Gen X generations, and they don't really understand. We can't always get on the same page. We don't always understand the same perspective. So it's incumbent on me in order to build those strong relationships with them um, and get them to understand where we're coming from and how as legislators, even though you've been here for a while, you are advocating for me and everybody else that I represent besides yourselves. And how we grew up, grew up is different than how you grew up. And we must keep that in mind when we think about policy and legislation. And then most of the time, this legislation that we're moving, it doesn't just affect those currently um, here. It affects those 20, 30 years behind us. And so we got to be very intentional about building a world that we want not only ourselves to live in, but our children, our grandchildren, and those after. Awesome, awesome. And also, what policies are you working on right now that affects uh, the next generation? Awesome. So some of the major policies that I'm working on right now are one is sex trafficking, human sex trafficking. Um, that's an issue that has come to the forefront um, as far as legislative wise in the last 10 years. It's always been an issue. It's always been around. But there's never been much legislation and policy to combat human sex trafficking. And so uh, I was inspired by the Santoya Brown story uh, from Tennessee. And from then on, I realized that so many young girls and women who become fall victim to this issue. We must do more to help them find the resources so they can get out of this life. Also, I'm doing more to give voting access to young people. I'm working now with colleges and universities to craft a bill about how we can get early voting on campuses. And so college students can have an opportunity to engage in civic um, learning on our higher institutions of learning. Um, campuses and so I think that's important that they have an opportunity to vote. They are the largest rising uh, generation of voters in this country, our millennials and our Gen X's and if they can't go to their institutions of higher learning and be civically engaged, where else can they be engaged? Right. Also, I am a, uh, having a baby so I'm really excited about that and so thank you and I am excited about being a new mom and I, it's a boy and even raising a son. And so when I think about how do we really create a world where mothers, now where women are 50% of the workplace, can live and create their families too. Are we really putting in place workplace policies that are conducive to mothers so we can raise our children, but also be able to create uh, economic stability for ourselves and make sure our jobs uh, put in accommodations for women like me. And so I definitely understand I'm the only woman in the state house of childbearing ages right now. So I'm definitely trying to push a new movement and a new thought process when our legislators dominated by men who have wives who can take care of their children. They can do whatever they want. But what does it look like to be a working mom right. and doing this as well? And so um, we haven't had anybody to challenge those ideas for a while. And so I've been very inspired by this new experience I'm going through in life. And most importantly, education and healthcare. Um, one thing that every American and every person in this world, it should be guaranteed is education and ability to have healthcare access. Nobody can avoid being sick in this world. Nobody. And so the fact that we uh, use healthcare as if it's a capitalist system, that we make sure we give care to the to greatest of these and leave behind the least of these, 
is not right. So I want to make sure we're, I'm challenging the morals and the values of my conservative legislators and ensuring we're legislating on behalf of all people, not just some people. And that's the type of world that I think my generation, the those under 35 represent, a world where everybody can live and thrive and be happy and have equal access to resources. Keep up the great work. Thank uh, you. Those are some really good policies, and I'm glad you're continuing those. Thank you. Uh, and also, like, what uh, what advice would you give uh, somebody that wants to run for office one day, or wants to get involved in public service <clears> of <throat> some sort? Like, what what would you tell them? Um, I think everyone has an obligation to be some type of civically engaged, whether it's running for office, uh, leading a protest volunteering, being a teacher, teaching our children. We all have some obligation to give back to this world, but be strategic. What is it that you specifically want to change or what area of policy you want to be effective in or what level of government you're most interested in and figure out a craft of victory. Use strategy, be strategic. And nothing comes overnight, it's not easy. Just, you know, work hard, be persistent. Um, and then you'll get there. You know, I remember when I first ran for office, I lost. I was 23 years old and I did win. And But I had no strategy. I just knew I wanted to get my foot in the door. And it helped, of course, you know, was being able to meet all these new people. But from then on, I took those the next four years to create a strategy and a plan for my community and how I wanted to be effective. So I made sure I, uh, my jobs were in policy areas uh, that I was interested in, such as um, education and reproductive justice this work and from then on it helped build my policy platform when I finally ran for office when I ran for strong schools healthy families safe communities because I was strategic about how I wanted to build my brand and how I wanted to be a trusted asset for my community so when it was time to run knowing those were the top two issues for my particular district I was able to articulate the needs of my community and they saw me as a trusted asset and that's why they voted for me and so I want to encourage all young people People. If you want to run for office, get in there, build up your policy understanding, get out in the community, make sure your leaders know you, work hard, and you'll get there. We need you. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you so much no for problem. your time.